Hello and welcome to this video. So we're going to get started with our web dash. Before we do that, we're going to install an extension on Visual Studio Code. If you click on the extensions button here, you'll open up the extension search box where you can see what you already have installed and you can also uh, select things to install. You'll see that I have this live server installed here. So if you type into the search live server, you'll get live server come up. Install that and we can use that then to run just a simple web development server within Visual Studio Code. When you have that installed, you should see down on the bottom right hand side of Visual Studio in the blue toolbar, this go live icon here. So to make a start then inside index.html, I'm going to type HTML and that should bring up for you some options here. Visual Studio is full of uh, code shortcuts. It's really helpful, especially when typing uh, HTML because it's a bit of a pain. This HTML colon five, just gonna hit enter with that selected and that'll pre-fill a load of uh, template stuff for me to get started with my web page. Next thing I want to do is get the actual server running. So I'm gonna type boom in here and just control and S to save this and then click on this go live icon down on the bottom right. So that's the extension that hopefully you've just installed. And what you should get then is inside the 127, so your local host, 550 forward slash static index HTML, you should hopefully see boom or whatever you typed inside there. To aid the development of our dashboard, we're actually going to use a framework called Vue.js. So don't worry if you've just started with web development and you've already seen the HTML and thought, what the hell is all of this? Um, Vue.js is a framework that's actually made to make the development of uh, web applications easier, not more difficult. So there are two ways of using Vue.js. One of them is to use their command line interface, which involves installing Node.js and all sorts of things like that. But there's another more simpler way, and that's simply to include it in the index.html. So I'm on Vue.js.org here. And I'm going to click on the getting started or get started here. And here you can find loads of really, really good documentation. In fact, one of the things I really like about Vue, especially if you're a beginner, is it's full of all the information you need. You don't really need any tutorials or anything because they have all of the information here for you. So on the getting started page in the introduction, just going down a bit, it tells us how we can go about installing Vue. And here we've got the development version, which includes helpful console warnings. So we'll take that. So I'm going to copy this script line here and then just above the title tag here, I'm going to paste that script tag in. Now I'm going to make my screen a bit bigger here now so we can actually see it. And also we can change the title now to indicators or oh, let's change it to 4x, why not? And save. So now when our page loads, it will actually load in the Vue.js framework, which is inside this Vue.js JavaScript file, and it'll get it from this address. Now you could download this and save it inside the static folder and load it from there, but we'll leave it from here. If you don't have an internet connection running whilst you're uh, looking at this or doing this, then you'll need obviously to have it pre-downloaded. The next thing I want to do is open the developer tools on our web page. So I'm going to click on the right hand side on the menu. I'm using Firefox here. It's very similar for most browsers, but here there's web developer and then toggle tools. And down the bottom here, you can see I've got a console, an inspector, a debugger, network, and all sorts of things that help me inspect what's going on with the web page. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see things a bit better. And if I click on the console tab, you'll notice that it's picked up that we're running Vue and tells us we're running Vue in development mode. And we know we are because we took the development version of Vue. So that's good. So Vue is loaded and we're still loading our web page because we can see boom on it and we can see that the title tab has changed to 4x. So the next thing I'd like to do then is just get going with Vue. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste this section here with the div ID app and the message with these curly braces. And don't worry, I'll explain what this is doing in a minute. Go back into Visual Studio Code and just to paste that inside here, save it and then go back to the web page. And you can see that we've got this message in these curly braces here, which is exactly what we've just pasted in. If you see this error for the favicon, don't worry about this. Next, I'm going to go to view and you can see that there's a little bit of JavaScript here. We're just going to copy that as well. And back in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to make a new file called app.js and paste that code inside there and save. And then inside the index.html, underneath this div, but before the body closes, I'm going to type script. And you can see that already I get the option of script or script colon source. I'm going to take the colon source, hit enter, and then inside the source here, type app.js. So we load our app.js. Now, when I save that and go back to our web page, you can see that we now see hello view instead of those curly braces. 
So let's take a moment to understand what's actually going on here because you'll probably be very confused if you've never seen this kind of thing before. So we have declared a div with an ID and we saw in the previous video what an ID is of app. So this div element here where it opens here on line 11, close on line 13, has the ID of app. At the top here we're loading in the view framework and at the bottom here we're loading in our app.javascript. Now when JavaScript files are loaded it's much like importing modules in Python. Any code in them is also executed so functions are defined, variables are defined and also any code that's not inside a function or something will be executed straight away. In the Vue.js framework there's some code in there that's executed and creates various objects and variables for us. So what's happened inside app.js is we've created a new variable. Now in Python we don't say var or something like this for a new variable. In Python we don't have anything, we just have the pure name of the variable. In JavaScript you can use const, let or var. Uh, the older fashioned ways to use var, the more modern ways to use let or const, but I'm not going to go into that because it's not really relevant to this course. But we're creating a new variable called app here. And when we do that, we create what's a new instance of a view object. And this is like creating a new class in Python. And you can see that the brackets open here and they close here. And we pass in as a parameter, much like a function in Python, or parameters to a class in Python, and we've done that many times, we pass an object denoted by these curly braces here. And this object has key and value and key and value. Again, exactly the same as in Python. Now the structure or the keys and the values to this view object have to be of a certain syntax. The EL here tells the view framework where our view application is going to be hosted. And you can see with the hash here, from you know from the previous value, that's talking about an ID. So it's saying that our application, our view app, is going to exist inside the element that has the ID app. That means our view app is going to be inside this div. So anything we declare outside this div will have nothing to do with our view application. The reason we're using view is we'll be able to manipulate and control and change all of the content inside this div very, very easily. The next thing is we declare some data on our view instance. And here we declare one key and a value. And the key is message and the value is hello view, which is the hello view we see over in the browser here. So how do we end up with this being shown here? Well, these double curly braces here are what's known as interpolation. In other words, we're telling view to expect that it should have on its data object a key message and that we want to put whatever value is stored in the key message here. In other words, the hello view, which is what we see here. So if I go and change this to hello beer and save, we can see that instantly I change here to hello beer. Now there are many frameworks. Another famous one is called React. That's one I use in most of my projects. And there are many, many other frameworks as well. All of them designed to do basically what you're seeing here. And that is write a little bit of code in JavaScript and be able then to manipulate the DOM or document object model. So basically everything that you see on the web page. They allow easy manipulation and changing of this without writing tons and tons of repetitive JavaScript. They kind of translate everything into pure JavaScript in the background. Okay, good. So next video we can start looking at trying to load our actual Forex data then from our data.json onto our web page. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.